I am Brashawn Shaw, international motivational speaker, business leadership coach, diversity and inclusion expert and author. My name is Camille John and I'm a senior vice president at Bank of America. So the lovely India Gary Martin, who's just such a powerhouse, um, thought it would be great as, as WOWS looking to expand into the U.S. She wanted to put together a delegation of women to just experience the stories, mm -hmm. the energy, and the transformative power that's going down on downstairs. Mm -hmm. And she it's something you can't describe, and she wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity to just experience it firsthand and see how we can help be ambassadors and bring the messaging and the excitement um, back to the U.S. Now let me tell you, it's about being authentic and speaking up. You know, I feel like now is the time that women, we have to have this confidence, this courage to just speak up. Because we've been so afraid for so long, living in fear. And you know, fear is false evidence appearing real. We need to stop living in that fear and speak up. It sounds easy, what I'm saying, but it's really hard because we have been placed through our biases, through our belief system, through what we've been taught as little kids to not speak up. Don't rock the boat. Don't make waves. You know what? Just keep on doing what status quo. But in order to make change and for change to happen, you have to speak up. So what I did was one time speak up and it's like, wow, okay, they listen. And then I spoke up again. And now I have this confidence of, you know what? They can only tell you no. That's my motto. They can only tell you no. And so what if they say no, go to someone else. Mm -hmm. Go up the roof. Go to the side. Go in the back door. But they can only tell you no. So my thing is speak up, have the courage, and form relationships in what you do so you can have champions working with you. The most significant barrier, I think, is the... the the, I mean, the gender equality. I, I, I think it's our time now, but we come from in corporate America and me doing leadership coaching, mm -hmm. business career coaching, that the men are at the top. Mm -hmm. All the men are at the top positions from CEO down to VP. I mean, as you know, with Fortune 500 companies, there's only, what, 19 CEOs. You know, as chairman of these Fortune 500 companies, there may be like five I've read just in Fortune the other day. So they're not used to operating with women in the mix. They're not used to communicating with women in the mix. So when they go play golf, when they go out for happy hour, when they go and do their boys, boys and their men's men things, mm -hmm. that a woman is not in the equation. And they don't want a woman in the equation because then it changes the dynamic. Mm -hmm. So being a female changes the dynamic and changes the conversation in the room. And so something that they're not used to, they don't know how to adapt. And they don't want to adapt. But now we're busting through walls, mm -hmm. breaking down barriers, coming in with full force <laughs> saying, hear me, listen to me, I'm here. Some of my career highlights have been when you step outside of your comfort zone um, and really taking the opportunity. Sometimes you have to take little wins and figure out how to leverage those and tell a story in terms of building the brand and what people are supposed to know about you. The other wins, um, to Brashan's earlier point about what's creating some barriers, sometimes it's other women. Mm -hmm. And so I think the wins have been generating very personal, empathetic relationships where I can with other women so they can understand there's no competition here. We're all here to win. I think, you know, being in these environments, a, a lot of us have something to prove. And so it, it can be challenging letting folks know you're on the same team. And so the wins for me have been establishing those relationships, even after starting out with great turmoil and some of those folks becoming your greatest advocates and where I've seen some of the biggest turnovers in my career have been advocate 
grants for men and sponsorships for men, um, believe it or not. They are more likely to tell you some of the rules and things you just don't know you that you don't know, um, what you should be thinking about and focusing on. I've had leaders come to me and say, hey, Camille, don't stay in that role too long. The longer you stay there, the less value you will bring. Don't stay here, you know, move over to this side. So I think it's, it's getting people that um, want to be invested in your success and being able to leverage and build those relationships so you can grow, and then knowing sometimes when you need to pivot. Sometimes you just gotta throw in the towel. It's nothing personal about who you are. It's not even a, um, it's not even a, a ding in your armor. It's just sometimes this came to an end and it's supposed to move you on and open yeah. other doors. Ugh, I have a lot of personal goals. <laughs> I'm building out a training facility online and offline where I can coach leaders, senior execs, C-suite levels, women and men all over the world. I want this to be global. I want my business to be in London, Australia, Germany, mm -hmm. Switzerland, New York, LA, DC, mm -hmm. training and helping leaders and corporations. And, and I really want to open the door on gender equality, race equality, really mm -hmm. Get into their, their mindset, change things, not just tap into it, really, really go into the training of true leaders. I have had a lot of inspiration. One is my father. My father is my rock. He, as a little kid, always made me feel like I can do everything. And I think it starts with the foundation. When you have a man in your life that tells you, you can do it all. You know, even today, I mean, it's funny. He's like, you know, call ABC. Try to get on TV. I'm like, Dad, it's not that easy. You can't just call ABC. You know, call Oprah. But every journey and everything along the way, he's the cheerleader. He's in the audience and he's 83, who okay. thinks he's 23. <laughs> but he is cheering me on from from the day I was a little girl that you can be the president, you know, never settle for anything. When I was in corporate America, he said, you want more, go get more. Mm -hmm. Don't live in a box because nothing's wrong with corporate America. I love it. But corporate America can put you in a box because you're a piece of a puzzle, mm -hmm. right? He said, you are the puzzle. And another one is Michelle Obama. Mm -hmm. You know, Michelle Obama as first lady, but even before then, valedictorian of Harvard, like yeah. really, you know, activists on health, on children's health, on speaking out. As a black woman, it's hard. No matter what, I mean, she went through a hard period of people t saying she looks like a monkey. Mm -hmm. She's too black. Mm -hmm. She's too dark. She's not pretty enough. And that's hard in front of 350 million people mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. But she pushed through it. And that's what I love about her.